All right, guys, today I'll be turning these materials into a nice, sturdy, queen-sized loft bed for your apartment or dorm or whatever for a very good price. All right, here I am at Lowe's getting my necessary um, lumber. And I'd like to make a point, when you're looking for lumber at Lowe's, um, I'd go to Lowe's, not Menards, because uh, that board's okay. Um, but as you can see in some of these boards, they're not very straight. Um, some of them are twisted, some of them are bent. Uh, you wanna go through and get a board that is extremely straight. I know these aren't perfect, but they're pretty close. I'll be cutting them in half and I'll make them better. But um, yeah, you wanna hand pick your lumber to make it uh, all good and straight and no cracks, easy to work with. All right, here's an excellent example of what you don't want to buy. This thing is shaped like a freaking S. That would be a pain in the butt to work with. You could never get it level. You could never get anything square with it. Yep, that's just make sure you don't buy any two by fours that are like this. <laughs> all right, so I'm at Lowe's. I got all my materials. I have 14 steel two by four joist hangers. They're about 70 or something cents a piece. I've got a box of one and a half inch joist hanger nails. These are super strong nails. Um, really good shear strength. I have a box of two and a half inch exterior screws. I have four, four inch, one half, um, one half inch bolts. These are going to be going through, uh, these are going to be connecting my legs to my my bed frame. They're going to be holding most of the weight and I got an excess of um, washers and six bolts just for an excess or not bolts nuts just for an excess of nuts. I've got four um, four two by six by twelves. So these are going to make up my four legs and my sides of my beds and uh, in the side of the the box of the bed. I've got two two by four by twelves and three two by four by tens. And then at my house, I have the other necessary two by fours to build the uh, the ridges that this is going to lay on. And I've got one four by eight piece of Luan. All in all. It should add up to about a hundred dollars. I'll show you the receipt when I'm done though. All right guys, I'm back at the shop. I got the receipt. I spent a total of $124 on all the materials that you saw me pick up. But I gotta say one thing, actually a few things. I already have a pile of scrap two by fours. I'm not gonna use all of those, but you're probably gonna wanna buy an extra two or three two by four by tens in order to make some of the cross supports underneath the mattress. Now, I know what you're thinking, okay, I already spent $124 on this material, now I need to go spend another $15 on 2x4, so what's that, $140? Um, that's not super cheap for a homemade loft bed build, but let me just uh, throw this at you. You're probably taking this to college, right? I'd say a good, good percentage of my audience of this video is. When uh, you have your girlfriend over to your apartment, do you think that she's going to want to lay on your... $75 loft bed build made out of freaking milk crates with a twin mattress propped on top and a cardboard box underneath for support? Or do you think she's going to walk in and see a bed built by a craftsman with solid 2x6 legs, 2x6 sides? They could be 2x4s if you want to. Those will work. But I think I know which one I want in my apartment. So yeah, that's why I'm spending 150 bucks. But for real though, you could get away with two by four sides, two by four legs. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned this or not, I'm building this to be a queen size bed, meaning I'm using almost double the material um, on the box that a, like a twin size bed would use. So yeah, I'm building it to be a very big, strong, sturdy bed for two people. So enough talking about that. Let's go ahead and start building.
All right, guys, it's time to explain the blueprints very quickly. This is a six foot two by six, six foot two by six, six foot two by six, six foot two by six. Those are the legs. So those require two, uh, two by six by twelves cut in half. This is the box, the thing that the that holds most of the weight horizontally. This is made of two by sixes also. Uh, this is an 84 inch, I know it says 82, but 84 inch uh, long, 60 inch wide. So this piece plus this piece equals 12 feet. So I can make this out of a two by six and this out of a two by six. If you're wondering, a queen size mattress is 60 by 80. My bed is 60 by 84. Uh, so this will fit a queen size, full size, twin, whatever. Um, then between these two horizontal two by sixes, are seven evenly spaced two by fours sitting vertically. Here's a, a picture of the top side. Once again, that's 84, not 83 inches. Um, and as you can see, here's where the legs are gonna go through. And uh, yeah, so it's two by fours in here like this. Yep, and then uh, on this back is a two by four. So to keep it from uh, rocking and stuff, keep it more stable. And here at the bottom, just keep everything square. I've got two by fours cut from extra support. And then I got a two by four up here. It's gonna be slightly above the mattress height to keep me from rolling off and dying in the middle of the night. So yeah, let's go ahead and start cutting some wood. All right, so the very first thing we're gonna do is we have four legs. We have four uh, two by six by twelves. So we need to take two of those two by sixes and chop them directly in half So we make four six-foot legs. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's the six-foot mark and now these are actually like 12 Feet and a little over a half. So let's go six feet and a little over a quarter. Here's a quarter So yep we're gonna cut them right there. A little safety note, when you're running the chop saw, you're gonna want your finest pair of safety glasses and uh, slap them on your face so you can see excellently so you don't cut any fingers off. Let's go. Just making sure it's nice and back and even. guys now it's time to cut these two by sixes for making the box so I've got my two by six by twelve remember this is gonna be an 84 and a 60 so I made a mark at 84 measured from that direction now just to double check that this piece the excess is gonna be 60 I'm going to uh, measure from that direction just to be safe because I like math and uh, yeah, so anyway, yeah, it's a little bit over 60 inches, which is good because uh, this board's actually a little bit longer than 12 inches. So a little bit of extra of the 60 inches can't hurt. So let's go ahead and cut this piece into an 84 inch and a 60 inch to make the box. I'm gonna do that two times, once on this two by six and once on that two by six. All right, guys, so I used my square it's uh, not lined up right now, but I used my square to make sure all my corners were roughly square. Here's my box laid out and ready to be screwed together with a couple screws in each end. And I'd like to point something out real quick. Um, this is now about 81 inches long for the inside, which is still perfectly fine to fit a uh, queen size mattress because a little bit of that extra four inches was taken up by um, the width of these two boards. So yeah, you're gonna have a little over 60 inches wide and a little over 80 inches um, long. So I'm gonna go ahead and put two screws in each corner and then I'm gonna go ahead and put all the uh, two by fours across. And I'm using the um, two and a half inch uh, screws over here.
All right. Now I'm gonna do that to every corner. All right, guys, so I've got the two screws in the end of every corner of the box. Now I'm trying to find the placement of my two by fours. Um, but first, I'm gonna cut all seven two by fours into the exact length to fit between the two sides. And that would be 60 and what is that? Uh, that's four eighths, five eighths, six. Yeah, it's about 60 and five eighths. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut seven two by fours into 60 and five eighths inch lengths. All right, guys, I've got all seven of my two by fours cut to 60 and 5 eighths inches. Now it's time to put my brackets on. That way uh, I can slide them into place. Now the idea with these brackets is to make these two by fours removable, not permanent, to make this bed a lot lighter. I don't think it needs to be a lot lighter, but whatever. It makes it a lot nicer anyway. Um, you can do it by just putting two screws through it, and that'll save you, I don't know, maybe 10 bucks. But uh, I don't really trust putting two screws through these because putting two screws into the end of a board like that is not very structurally sound. It's probably structurally sound enough to hold a person um, with all this support, but you know, I like to overbuild things. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, move these two by fours out of the way, put the brackets on with the nails, and uh, then slide the two by fours back in. Now I must say, since I got seven of them, this is an 84 inch board, the middle one's at 42, then another one's at 21, and then half of that is 10 and a half. So every 10 and a half inches, you're gonna have a bracket for a two by four to go in on both sides. So, yep, I'm gonna go ahead and move all these and show you putting the brackets in. Okay, so if we're putting these brackets in, I'm just kind of eyeballing the center uh, of that, of my, dash mark up here and uh, putting the bracket on, nailing one side in and putting a little 2x4 spacer in there because you don't want to nail your bracket on like this because then you'll never fit a 2x4 in. You want to make sure you got good spacing so I just keep a piece, little piece of 2x4 in there to make sure my spacing is good and then when I'm nailing these in for extra strength I'm putting my nails at an angle like that because the force is going to be pushing down on it. And if I had my nails at an angle like that, it could pull out. But like this, it's extra, extra strong. I'm going to do all four nails. Once again, I'm using these, um, these joist nails. Yep, joist hanger nails. This is the exact purpose they're built for. So, yep, I'm going to, head, going to go ahead and uh, put a, a joist hanger on every spot on both sides. Slide my two by fours in. All right, guys, there is the hardest part done. Um, as you can see, all these brackets are in there. And the two by fours are not attached. The only one I screwed in was the center one to give this whole thing a little bit more uh, rigidity. And I only put one screw in each end. But yeah, there it is. Um, it's really nice how this works out, how the two by fours um, go with the two by six sides because here's a piece of luon just as an example piece my luon's gonna sit on there like that and then it leaves a little bit of lip right here so my mattress won't slide off my my bed or if i have a little bit of gap because i'm not putting a queen size mattress on this queen size frame um i can have this area right here to put an alarm clock put my phone while it's charging at night you know, it's just a handy little tray off to the side of my bed. Yeah, so I think it'll work out just fine. I think the next step now is to go ahead and attach the legs. All right, guys, so as you can see, I'm about to put the legs on. I have two legs evenly spaced. 
I squared this one up already with the with the square and the length from or the distance from the floor to the bottom of this frame is exactly four foot eight inches so that means I'll have to bend over and crouch down to walk underneath this thing which is okay because I'm gonna have a futon and a coffee table underneath it that's plenty enough in, uh, that's plenty enough room and that gives me this much sticking out above my bed or above the uh, bottom of the frame so here's gonna be the Luan and my mattress now so let's just say the mattress starts at about 60 inches because it's going to be sitting on top of here essentially um so a mattress is normally about nine inches thick so we've got 69 inches that's the top of my mattress so that gives me this little bit of room at the top of here to put a two by four on going this direction as my guardrail so i'm going to have a guardrail sticking about three inches up above my mattress that's good for me um it would take an aggressive roll to fall off a bed like that, especially a big queen size bed where I got lots of room to roll around on. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do the same thing to this, or I'm going to uh, measure this leg out, square it up, and I'm going to put four screws in here, 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 and here, and then I'm going to put the bolt right through the middle, and then I'm going to turn them over and put legs on there and there just the exact same way. Four foot eight inches from the floor to the bottom of the frame. All right, this is your most important part to get square. And I've already done it, but you need to make sure that this angle between the bottom here and the bottom here is extremely square and exactly 4.8 inches or else you're, you're gonna have a bed that sits on the floor all rocky. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my four screws in. These are two and a half inch screws. When I actually build this bed, I put my four screws in there and put my bolt right there. When I assemble it in its location, I'm going to put two screws or three screws in here to keep this piece, just to keep everything a little more, more uh, stable. But since I'm about to pull those screws out to uh, make this bed shippable on the back of a truck, I'm not going to put those two or three screws into the end right there just yet. I'm going to have to do that when I assemble it in its final location. So yeah, now I'm going to flip it over, do the exact same thing for those two legs. Okay, so I put all four legs on. They've each got four screws, as you can see right there. And just like to show you, this is level. And this side is level. Let's see, I don't think these are going to be very level. Well, they're level enough. Anyway, it's level enough. I didn't do make any uh, didn't do any uh, massive mistakes yet. Knock on wood. And uh, I think the next goal is going to be to drill my holes for my four bolts, uh, or for my one bolt per leg. Those bolts. Put them on. Crank them on there, and then I'm going to probably put these like the. Uh, the lower supports on. So yep, I'm gonna go ahead and drill my holes for my bolts. Alright, time to put my my big bolts through there. These are half inch bolts, so I got a half inch um, drill bit. It's gonna stick it straight to the center. And these bolts are gonna hold most of the weight of my body on this bed. Alright, let's clean through. Oh yeah, so that fits perfectly. 
so just a couple of wrenches. That'll be uh, extremely secure. So there she goes. That's the other side of it. I'm gonna do that for all four legs. Get back to you. All right, I've got all four bolts installed. Now the next thing to do is to make my lower support beams. That way my legs can't get all uh, bendy and stuff. So I already know, or you already know the dimensions. They're the exact same dimensions as these outer uh, two by sixes. I'm gonna make them out of a 12 foot two by four, cut it to 84 inches and 60 inches. You already know how to do that because I showed you how to do that with the two with the 12 foot two by six. So all right, she's almost finished. I've got all those lower supports cut out. And then I've got a approximately nine and a half foot two by four right here going diagonally to keep the bed from shaking so much. Um, I have a, a 84 inch two by four over here. That's gonna be my guardrail. It's gonna run from that post to this post. I'm not gonna secure any of these bottom supports or this yet because I'm about to, after I finish this video, I'm gonna take this whole thing apart and store it for a couple months before I actually use it. So yeah, I'm not gonna build the entire bed to its fullest potential today. But when I do, I'm gonna put a crazy ton of screws um, extra in this thing to make sure everything's nice and solid. Like right here, I've only got one screw. I'm probably gonna put four in there. Uh, down there, I'm probably gonna put two, you know. So right now, I'm about to build the ladder. I cut that my last two by 10, as you can see, I've got no more lumber left. I got my, la my last two by 10, I cut it in half into two five foot sections for my ladder. I've got all these little tiny leftover chunks right here. Um, these are from my scrap pile. They're all exactly the same length. So I'm gonna go ahead and make five ladder rungs out of them. Wrap them up in, uh, wrap them up in something soft so I don't get splinters on my feet and uh, make my ladder out of them, so. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that, that's self-explanatory. All right, there's my ladder. I just laid it on the ground, put a mark every 10 inches, and uh, yeah, there's 10 inches between each step, there's five rungs. So I only put one screw in each side. That way I can just go ahead and do this. Now it's nice and level, now it's a nice and level surface. I just gotta put another screw in right here somewhere, and all my uh, rungs will be nice and steppable. Uh, I'm probably going to wrap them in something so I don't get splinters in my feet because some of these 2x4s are beyond sanding. Um, yeah. Cutting my low on to 80 and 1 half inches so I can put my mattress on it. It's a very simple step. excess piece. So there it is with the Luan on it. Here's a little excess piece. Shave that down so I can fit it in here. And I got a couple other little extra chunks over here from other projects that I'll fill in those gaps with. But yeah, the bed's almost done. I'm going to go ahead and actually move these bottom rails up halfway. I think that'll make it a little more rigid. Um, yeah. All right, this is the last segment. That's as far as I'm gonna take it. Um, I'm gonna take it all back apart after this video is done and put it in storage for a few months. I'm gonna go ahead and climb up on there and uh, show you how sturdy it is and that it actually holds somebody. Um, the last little few things I did was patched it in over here. You see I cut the little squares out in the corner so they fit around. Uh, so the Luan fits around there nice and snug. Um, Yep. Gonna go ahead, go ahead and climb up on there and show you that it actually holds a person's weight. All right. I weigh 185 ish pounds. Ladder works. All right. Now keep in mind, this is gonna be against a wall on that side. So there's gonna be a wall right here. So it will shake a lot less doing this. That's pretty solid right there. And it's 
very solid back and forth. They, can, they won't even shake back and forth. But it will shake like this a little bit. That's okay. Because I said, the wall is going to be right here. Um, yeah, I think it works good. I think it works really good. Uh, my ladder is not attached, so if I fall... <laughs> There we go. Yeah, my ladder is not attached to the uh, to the bed at all. <laughs> not yet, anyway. Yeah. So there you go. A queen size loft bed build. You can fit a, a full size futon underneath here. That's what I'm doing. And I'm putting a coffee table in front of it too. Um, yeah, works great. Cost one hundred fifty dollars to make. Um, but you could make it cheaper if only two by fours. Yep, peace. All right, little bit of bonus footage. I took the whole thing apart. Me and my dad did that. About to put it in the truck and put it in storage until I can use it. And uh, if you want to keep this whole thing square while you're storing it, um, after you take it apart, make sure it's nice and square on the corners. And then use that back support, the one that used to be going across your back two legs, and just slap it on there uh, across your your two weight supporting um, beams and then screw it in and that should keep it a lot more square and a lot more stable if you're putting this in a truck bed or something and then moving it around